All right, so today I'm gonna show you guys how to make this ad or something close to it. Uh, I shot the Remy bottle earlier. Uh, the picture that we're gonna be using is one uh, is right here. It just shot on my desk. Obviously, there's a bunch that needs to be done to it. Um, I'm also gonna put this file up so you guys can follow along and do the same tutorial if you want. Uh, so just to get started, you obviously just open it up in Photoshop CC or any other version of Photoshop if you have it. We're not using any like CC specific tools here. Um, it is a CR2, so it's gonna open up Adobe Camera Raw. You don't really need to change anything in here. Uh, since I try to make sure as much as possible that I wouldn't need to do anything with the actual raw file itself, so just leave all this the same and hit open image. Dun, 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 dun. Wait for it to load. Uh, so clearly the first thing that needs to be done is you see this handle here, uh, as well as this shadow. This is all going to be taken care of as well as this dirty ass table that's just looking awful. And I didn't use I didn't use the best lens on this. I used a Tamron lens that's pretty fucked up. Uh, so it's not as clear as it could be, but it'll work for the example that we're doing. Uh, so first and foremost, what you're going to want to do is just go into full screen mode and make it a little bit easier. So you're going to hit C. Uh, let's use the crop tool. And you're just going to turn this until it's straight. You don't really need to size it down at all at this time. Uh, other than the fact you just want to bring this up to about right here so that you have that. And then just center it within here. Come on. And then just hit enter to accept it. Uh, so what you want to do, you never want to mess with your background layer just in case you need to go back to it. So we're just going to duplicate this two times. And then we're going to turn both of these off. So this is your just in case layer. So you don't need to use this necessarily, but just in case you mess up, it's good to have that as a background. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this letter, we're going to call this letter bottle. Uh, and since you need, we need to cut it out to get it off of this background because there's some smudges here and some smudges there. We need to make it look as close to that ad as possible. Uh, so what we're going to do is when we have the uh, edges right here, you can obviously see these. These are really defined. Um, but over here, you can't really see it too much. So an easy way to get around that is you just go to Curves and then bump it all the way up. So this is going to let you see all the edges. Now, you don't want to blow it out. Uh, sometimes if you have highlights on the edges, it'll blow them out. But in this case, we have some nice hard lines that we can use. Uh, so just go back to that. And then we're just going to use the Pen tool to go in here. And you just do a real quick selection. Um, I always leave the rubber band option checked just so I can see where my path is going. It makes it a little bit easier for me. Uh, so go right here. Okay, so we have our selection. Um, the curves layer is not really going to be necessary anymore, so you can just go ahead and delete that. Uh, delete the layer. Okay, so now you see you have your pencil selection, so you just hit Command Enter. It's going to turn it into the actual selection itself. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is just create a mask. And since we already have it selected, it's just going to select this on the mask. Uh, so here we have our bottle completely masked out, uh, which is what we want. Uh, so at this point, with the picture being as clean as it is, uh, with the type of ad we're doing, we're not going to need to do too much to the bottle itself. Uh, so what we're going to do is just start working on a little bit of shines on the bottle real quick. Uh, so let me see here. So we're going to make a new layer, and then we're going to command click on the mask which is going to give you the actual selection of the bottle itself. And this is how we're going to make the highlight. Uh, so as you can see, these highlights, they're a little bit green. Uh, so you have the bright green right here, and then you have a little bit of white, and then obviously the deep greens of the bottle itself. Since this is a frosted bottle like this, the way that the light hits it is really specific. So we're not going to do too much of a highlight, but just, just a little bit. So we're going to hit I to select the eyedropper tool. And then just go in, select somewhere in here. A little bit more green there we go and everything's so selected so you just hit option delete it's gonna go ahead and fill that in uh, and then you're just gonna hit M let's go ahead and move your selection when you're holding down shift just hold down shift and then sorry actually you don't even need to hold down shift I'm sorry so you're just gonna need to move this hit shift after you already have it selected that way you can just move it in a straight line like this you're gonna move it a little bit over so we have that edge right there, and just hit delete. Uh, so right there, we just have a little bit of a hard shine. 
not anything too crazy. Uh, we're just going to set this to screen. It's going to make it a little bit bright. And then we're going to do, let's go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I want to blur this a lot. So we're going to go up to probably about 60. That's a little bit too much. Uh, let's say about 45. There we go. Okay. And then if I were to just leave this as is, uh, if I just put black behind this, you can see it's going to blur. It's going to blur outside of the bottle, which is what we don't want. So what we're going to do is just hold option and then just click right between these two layers. And that's going to add it to a clip. Um, so you're going to clip that. And then we just want to move it over a little bit and then drop the opacity down to about 50%. So that's just going to give you a really quick shine. And then we're going to go in and just take care of it because you're not going to have as much shine over the bottle itself or over the label itself, sorry. So you're just going to grab the brush tool and just get a nice, decent sized soft brush and just start brushing, start brushing this away. Careful not to go over. You can go, you can fade it a little bit right here and right here, but not too much. We're gonna to wanna to drop the opacity down to about 40% or so and just take care of this bottom one because you're not gonna have as much shine on the bottom. Okay, so that gives us a nice shine. Uh, so we'll just label this right shine. And then we're gonna duplicate this layer and hit Control T. We're just going to flip it horizontal. Just move this in. Because for this for this shoot, um, I had reflectors on both sides because I really wanted to light the edges of this to match with the feel of that ad. Uh, however, the left shine is not going to be as strong as the right one is. So we're just going to squish this one a little bit just to make it a little bit thinner, a little bit more dense. We're going to hit Enter. And then we're going to hit Control F to blur it again make it a little bit softer then we need to make sure to clip this as well you always want to clip to your bottom layer so you clip we're going to label this left shine and drop the opacity down to about 20 or so perfect so if you see this obviously we could group these and you can see that it just added a little bit of a shine but it was enough and you can see up here it's a little bit too much on these top labels uh, so all we need to do just go into each of each of these and just put this back on 100 and just go through and just get rid of this on each layer. So I got that one. And then we got this one. All right, so that looks pretty good. So now what we're going to do uh, is we're going to call this just going to call this bottle cutout. All right, what I'm going to do now uh, is just get rid of this layer. And it's only going to be for right now. So we're going to hit Shift, Option, Command, E. And that's going to merge all visible layers into one layer on the top. So this is going to be your reflection. I'm just going to label this reflection. And then we can turn this back on. So when you have a reflection, it's not going to start at the exact bottom. So it's going to ride up a little bit. Uh, somewhere around this area generally, just like we had in the original picture. So we're just going to hit Command T, and then we're going to go to right click and just flip it vertical. So it's going to flip it exactly vertical, which is what you want. And you just hit Enter. This is probably the easiest part of the entire process. So we're going to put the bottom of it to about right here, which you can see is a little bit underneath the label and then we're just going to move this behind bottle cutout and we can hide this. There we go. Wait, hold on. Sorry, I confused myself. Okay, so we're going to have the reflection behind the bottle and then the bottle cutout shines right here. Uh, so we're going to go, we're going to drop the opacity to about 50%. And we're just going to go in with a layer mask. And we're going to hit Command-I to invert the mask. That's going to make everything black. And then we're just going to grab a radial gradient with the color white. Um, so you're just going to start at the, this right here. And you don't want to get too much, but just hold Shift so you have a perfect circle. Try to get as in the middle of the bottle as you can. 
Uh, so what you need to do is just go right here and just keep going until you start seeing reflection. So you're not going to see a crazy reflection, uh, but it's going to be just enough to where you know that it's on a glossy surface. Okay, so if you look at this, let me see here. So if you look at this, if we were to stop right now, it looks okay. It still looks a little bit washed out in some areas, but you obviously have a pretty well lit bottle and then you have the reflection. Uh, so what we need to do now is go ahead and make the background. So what we can do is just group all these together and just hide them for now. So we'll put this work and right, we'll put bottle because that would make more sense. So we're going to go ahead and hide that. And then if you look, let me pull up that picture real quick. If you look at the actual Remy ad, you can see that it almost looks like it has spotlights behind it, um, which probably had something to do with the design of this bottle because it looks like it's a pretty music oriented bottle. Uh, but it's really a super easy thing to do. So all you're going to need to do is we're going to have just another, we're going to make another black layer. So just go to new layer and then we're going to paint it black. And then what we're going to do is going to go filter, render, clouds. And we're just going to render these a lot, hit three or four times. And then we're going to go to render difference clouds. So difference clouds is going to, it's going to distort them a little bit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to blow this up a lot. So zoom out pretty far and just hit Command T to transform and just hold Shift and Alt so that you have the same aspect. And we're just going to blow it up huge. Uh, so if you look here, I got about 580%. So we'll just say 600%. Just type that in and just hit Enter. All right, and let's go ahead and take care of it. Okay, cool. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to hit C and then make sure the delete cropped pixels is text or is selected because uh, what this is going to do is going to get rid of all the extra stuff that you have. It's also going to delete uh, whatever pixels are outside of the canvas for the bottle as well, uh, but we don't really need to keep those there at this point. We could always just remake the reflection in two or three steps if we needed to. Uh, so just hit enter. This is really going to help the size of your PSD as well. Not gonna have as not have to worry about as much data. Um, so we're gonna hit enter. Okay. Now we're gonna go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we're just gonna turn this way up. So we'll do about. Uh, let me see. We'll do about four hundred. All right. Perfect. Okay. So. If you were to turn this back on right now, you see we have a little bit of a background uh, with gray and white, uh, but we want to do something that matches the bottle because in the other one you had a red bottle, uh, a red bottle with a red background. So for this we're going to do a little bit of a green. So we're just going to do go to our adjustment layers and then go to hue and saturation. And we're going to click colorize, and then we're just going to go to a nice green tone. Just bump up the saturation. Bring it right there. Okay, and then to make this pop a little bit more, we're gonna put a little bit of a shadow behind. Uh, so we're gonna put background color. All right, what we're gonna do is just grab a gradient. We're gonna do a black gradient. This is gonna be super simple. Just click at the middle, hold Shift, and just go straight out. It's gonna put just a dot behind it. It's not really a big deal. Um, but just do this, just take it down a little bit in opacity and just set it to overlay. So it doesn't add too much, but it gives you a little bit more pop in the middle, which is really going to accentuate the actual shape of the bottle itself, which is what we want to do. Okay, so we take that and then as you can zoom in, you can see it's pretty close to what they did uh, as far as the blurred background. So what we're going to do now is just work on the overall color of everything. So the first thing we're going to do is just grab a curves layer. And everything I do, you want to use adjustment layers whenever you can, just because it's a non-destructive way of doing something. So you're not gonna, you're not gonna permanently apply this to a layer, which is great. And you can keep all your layers separate. So if you need to go back and change something, it's gonna be really helpful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring down the bottom a little bit, make it a little bit darker, and then we're gonna bring the highlights up a bit. It's gonna bring a little bit more clarity, and it's gonna bring a little bit more sharpness to that bottle as well. So you don't need to do too much, obviously. Uh, we can go into the green and bump the greens a little bit. 
Uh, let's make those a little bit. That's too much. Just a little bit. And as you can see, the red and everything is not really going to be affected because we're just messing with the green channel right now. Okay, so I'll go in here. And then the last step, we're going to do one more curves layer. And this is going to be an easy way to do a vignette. Now, if you have Lightroom or if you do this in Adobe Camera Raw, it's as simple as just using the post crop vignette, but we don't really want to do that because um, we obviously you know, didn't do that at the beginning and we changed the background. So the easiest way to do this is just pull this as pretty far down and it's going to darken the whole image. What we're going to do is this mask right here, we're just going to grab a really big soft brush. There we go. Pretty, pretty large. And we're going to put it at 100%. We're just going to paint over the bottle itself. And what this is going to do is it's going to darken the edges, but it's going to keep the bottle pretty bright. Okay, bring that up a little bit. That way, our bottle isn't affected. Come on. I don't know why it keeps going down. There we go. Okay, so if you turn this off and turn it back on, you can see it added a nice vignette to everything. Uh, so we just made a Remy Martin ad pretty easily. So you can just hit F, F, and hit Command Zero. And as you can see, it was not exactly like the Remy Martin ad. Obviously, we didn't shoot this with a medium format camera that was ridiculously high resolution and a ton of lights. But I used some poster board and pretty crappy lens and one strobe light. Um, so, in a matter of speaking, this is pretty damn close. Uh, so, like I said, I'm going to leave the CR2 file in the description on this so you can download it and work along if you want. And if there's any tutorials you guys want me to do or show you how to do a specific method, uh, just leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks.